Welcome to this special edition of FFRF's Ask an Atheist on Facebook Live. I'm Dan Barker. I'm Annie Laurie Gaylor, and Dan and I are co-presidents of the Freedom From Religion Foundation. Thanks for watching us live for this first time on Wednesday night. I'm Andrew Seidel, a constitutional attorney here and FFRF's Director of Strategic Response. Ask an Atheist usually broadcasts on Wednesdays uh, at noon, but we adjusted our schedule this week as an experiment to see if this is a more convenient time for viewers and because we have a very interesting topic. We're going to be talking about and debunking some of the lies of Christian nationalism, including many untruths recently spouted by Arkansas State Senator Jason Rappert. If you're watching us live on Facebook, you can ask a question in the comments section of FFRF's Facebook page, or you can send an email to askanatheist at ffrf.org. After we do a little debunking, like Annie Laurie said, we will answer your questions or get to your comments, and who knows, maybe even Jason Rapert himself <laughs> will swing by to learn a thing or two, or maybe even to ask a question. If you don't know that name, lucky you. Jason Rapert is the Arkansas, Arkansas State Senator responsible for getting the unconstitutional Ten Commandments monument erected at the state capitol in Little Rock, which FFRF is suing over. He is also a preacher. He runs the Holy Ghost Ministries. Holy Ghost Ministries. <laughs> that sounds exciting. Jason Rapert has a, a website called Holy Ghost Ministry, and we're not making up that title. He features a Bible verse on that website from Matthew 28, 18, where Jesus says, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. It's scary to have an official of our secular government who thinks that all of us, all of our laws, fall under the ultimate authority of a first century self-proclaimed Messiah who thought that he was divine. Jason Rappert is a Christian nationalist, and that's the term for a person who mistakenly believes that the United States is a Christian nation. If that person is a public official, he or she is likely to use their public office to promote their personal religious views on the rest of us. One of Jason Rappert's favorite things to do is to get on Facebook Live from his state office and talk about his God and his religion. And that's exactly what Jason Rapert did in the run-up to the 4th of July this year. He posted a video, uh, a Rapert rant, that's all, what we're calling it. all about the Declaration of Independence, about the founders, and about how in his America, our rights are God-given. And he got so very wrong about all that, so much wrong. And Andrew, you were reviewing this Rapert rant that he put on uh, Facebook Live, and you noticed something really interesting about what he was reading. That's right. Rapert is not speaking off the cuff here. He's not recalling and retelling these myths on his own. He's actually reading directly from a book. But it's not a history book. He's reading from a Bible, the American Patriots Bible. That's right, there is such a thing. It actually exists. And what a Bible it is. We found some of the promo videos for it. Hello, I'm Richard Lee, and it's my joy to serve as the general editor for the upcoming American Patriots Bible, scheduled to be released in the spring of 2009 by Thomas Nelson Publishers. I think that most of our hardworking citizens have a belief in their heart that the Bible is, certainly has influenced many of our founding documents, documents such as the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and numbers of others. Well, people can believe whatever they want in their hearts, but we skeptics tend to rely on facts. And the Bible did not influence the Declaration of Independence or the Constitution. The Declaration, in fact, is an anti-biblical document, one that says the source of our power comes from the people, the consent of the governed, not God and which also says that those people have a right to rebel against governments, which the Bible actively condemns, for instance, in Romans 13. So this Patriot's Bible was edited by a pastor, not by a historian, and we have a second clip from another promotion video for this 
Patriot's Bible. The American Patriot's Bible is filled with inspiring stories and historical documentation, revealing the overwhelming influence the Bible has had on the fabric of this nation. Containing every word of the Holy Scriptures in the New King James Version, this exclusive edition recounts the uplifting stories of our founding fathers and American heroes throughout our history. These great men and women of God, with their deep Christian convictions and biblical principles, played a vital role in the creation of our government and its laws. So before we dissect all of those myths and misinformation, uh, the true patriots are those who uphold the principles in the U.S. Constitution, which as you know, Dan and Andrew, is a godless and entirely secular document with no religion in it except to exclude religion. So let's not Senator, let Senator Rapert or other Christian nationalists get away with equating patriotism with piety and co-opting our nation for Christian nationalists. Well, so I'm wearing red, white, and blue today, so, so aren't, am I. And so are you. Aren't, aren't <laughs> the, we the real like, patriots. We are the real patriots of this country. And I just want to point out, too, that in that second clip, almost all of it, the overwhelming influence, the deep Christian convictions and biblical principles is a lie including that last image that we saw of Washington praying in the snow at Valley Forge. We know where that story comes from. It came from a preacher who was selling a, a really terrible pamphlet about Washington, the same one that gave us the story about Washington not being able to tell a lie after Cutting chopping down the cherry, down the cherry tree, tree, et cetera. Yeah, which is ironically a lie. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lie to tell the story that he told a lie, yeah. <laughs> so that's the book, that American Patriots Bible that Rapert is reading from on his Facebook rant, Rapert's rant. It's not history. It's not scholarly. It's a Bible. If Rapert really wanted to understand where our rights come from and wants to correct all the mistakes in this American Patriots Bible, he actually should read from a different book. Maybe, <laughs> Andrew, from the book that you wrote called The Founding Myth. Every one of the falsehoods that Rapert made in that video are exposed in Andrew's new book. So Rapert is reading from the wrong book, and since he is reading from a Bible, it shouldn't surprise us that he fails to get his facts right. Let's take a look at just a few of the things he got wrong. Who do we base our rights upon? Was it upon our founding fathers? No. That would have been basing our rights upon individuals over human beings. Was it upon the uh, patriots that fought in the Revolutionary War? No. They were critical to the winning of our independence, but it, that's not who we based our rights upon. So let me share this with you. The first paragraph of the Declaration of Independence sets the stage for the American Revolution and its absolute reliance on the laws of God. It's not actually the laws of God that uh, he goes on to quote. It's the laws of nature and of nature's God. That's what the Declaration of Independence says. And what Jefferson was speaking about in that line was natural law. Of course, Jefferson was a deist in mm -hmm. the classical sense of the Enlightenment. Absolutely. Cut not, up the Bible, Christian. removed all the supernatural nonsense from the Bible, including the virgin birth and the resurrection. And he was talking about natural law without any of the supernatural God stuff in it. Uh, there are kind of two views of natural law. There's supernatural natural law and natural natural law. Mm -hmm. And we know that he was using the latter, that he thought that human rights uh, could be derived through reason and logic. And we know that because he actually wrote that. The um, consent of the governed. Yeah, and we, we have a couple other places where Jefferson talked about natural law. Uh, in 1774, the summary view of the rights of British America, um, he says, he talks about deriving the laws of nature. That's where our rights come from. Their rights as derived from the laws of nature and not as a gift of their chief magistrate. Uh, and then later on, in, when he was Secretary of State, he wrote in 1793 that questions of natural right, this is again what he's talking about, are, tri are triable by their conformity with the moral sense and reason of man. Right? That is very clearly rejecting the idea that our rights come from God, that they are in any way God-given or divine. He could have said from the Bible and from the Bible's God, but mm -hmm. he said from nature and from nature's God, which is a totally different thing. Exactly, it? and that the rights are discoverable by human reason. And I, I think that, uh, Andrew, you can kind of count some of the references to Creator 
in uh, the Declaration of Independence and, t and say who added them. Yeah, we, we can, we can, we can go, and we'll, I think we'll do that in just a second. Okay. But there's one, I mean, one other thing, too, that the raper says here, which is God-given rights are actually dangerous. You know, he's pointing out that, well, your rights can be taken away if they're based on a king or a magistrate. But they can be taken away if they're based on a god, because whoever claims to speak for a god then gets to say what your rights are. They can say, for instance, as Raper does later in this video, that if you're gay, you don't get the right to marry. You know, and so people who speak for God then can take away your God's so rights. So if, if the rights are endowed, they could be unendowed, mm -hmm. right? And Raper says that, asks the question, on what are the rights based? Do rights have to be based on anything? Don't we just own them as human beings? And, and that is exactly what Jefferson was trying to say. Yeah. I mean, we have rights by virtue of being human. And we dethrone the king. Let's <laughs> dethrone the king of heaven or, you know, this idea that we have a master above us and that we can't act on our own critical faculties and human mm -hmm. compassion. A male deity, too, That for we need that. To, a big daddy in the sky to tell us what to do, much less to run our government. And you mentioned the four references uh, in the Declaration, and that's what Ra Rapert's going to talk about next. So okay. let's take a look. So did you see that? The separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and nature's God demand. That was the first mention of God in the Declaration of Independence. He was mentioned four times. They decided to make four specific references to God. And the reason they did that is because they knew that if rights depended upon a king, or rights were to be dependent upon a, part of, a parliamentarian or to uh, be depended upon a president or any human body that they could just change those rights and take those rights away. Uh, so, well, there are four references that's, that are very frequently trotted out by Christian nationalists. Isn't it true that the Declaration of Independence was written to the, the King of England, right? It was a document to declare, to cut off the bonds, to sever the bonds. Dissolve. And the, and the King of England was also the head of the church at the mm -hmm. time. So didn't it kind of make sense in the vernacular of the day to use this kind of language to try to argue with the king who was the head of the church, to try to use words? He didn't say the biblical God, but he was, Jefferson and the other writers of the Declaration of Independence were trying to talk Religious talk to this yeah, to monarch. Use a, to use a little bit of religious window dressing. That's, yeah. that's certainly a possibility. But you struck on something there that I think is even more important. That's that none of the references in here are Christian or explicitly Christian. The laws of nature and of nature is God, their creator, supreme judge of the world, and divine providence. You know, the only one of those that's ex explicitly in the Bible is creator, which every religion <clears throat> calls yeah. their God a creator. You know, and you mentioned where the different of those four come from, only the first one of those was put in there by Thomas Jefferson, the laws of nature and of nature's God. Their creator was added by Franklin and Adams during the editing process. And then the final two, divine providence and supreme judge of the world, were added by the whole Continental Congress. And Jefferson thought that they mangled uh, uh, his, oh, his declaration. He was very yeah. unhappy with some of the additions. And, and we actually have a rough draft his rough draft of the Declaration, and you can see in there uh, him how they edited this. And there is no mention of Christ or Jesus or anything except in the list of crimes. And Jefferson takes the quote Christian king to task for being involved in the slave trade. Uh, um, of course, that got deleted. That got deleted. So that was unfortunately. Yeah, but so they could. They could have mentioned enslaved people. But they could have mentioned Christianity. I mean, they, mm -hmm. they had the ability, they thought about it, they, it was in there, and they decided to remove that one reference. So that was, was a jab? But yeah, it was a jab. Absolutely, it was Christian a jab. Christian king and, and slavery. Yeah, it was, a jab, it was a jab at Christian king, and it, but it goes to your point about the declaration, one of the audiences being King George III, maybe getting him to stop us. So the wording as it is now could have been said by a Hindu monarch mm -hmm. or by a, a Native American chief. Anybody, any religion in the world could have used, or a, or a pagan, or, or, a, or a Muslim could use those same exact words, which, which kind of goes against the claim that we're a Christian nation, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, laws of nature and of nature is God. That certainly sounds more pagan to me than <laughs> Christian. Yeah, well. So we, do we have another? Oh, yeah, we've got, we got a, quite a few more. <laughs> Let's the go laws of nature and nature's God had been defined by historic legal writers such as Sir William Blackstone and others, as the laws that God 
the creator of the universe had established for the governance of people, nations, and nature. Blackstone's commentaries on the law, which had become the primary law book of the founding fathers, explained the laws of nature as the will of God for man which can be ascertained by people through an examination of God's creation, the text of the Bible, and to a certain degree, instinct or reason. And here's what Blackstone stated specifically. Please share this with your friends because they're gonna to wanna to hear this. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, so this is, he's not actually reading from the Declaration here. Again, he's reading from that Patriot's Bible and they're looking at Blackstone who is this legal scholar. But we should really look at the Declaration itself. So let, let's throw up the first paragraph of the Declaration of Independence because it is all about humanity. Bruce, do you have that image? Uh, I think we snapped it from uh, the founding. Myth. There it is. So when in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, a decent respect for the opinions of mankind. You know, this is all about humanity and the here and now in this world. It is not about God and the supernatural. It's antithetical, in fact, Absolutely. Uh, to the Bible. The Bible is all about people being enslaved and enchained, uh, obedient to a supernatural deity, telling them what to do. Exactly. This is all about human rights. Precisely. So, so it, but that's why it's called revolutionary. <laughs> yeah. So he quoted Blackstone. Yeah. Was Blackstone a highly regarded authority yes. at the time? Or he was... still is. He, he was, but that only tells half the story. And this is what happens when you get your history and your law from a Bible, not from historians yeah. or legal scholars. Blackstone was not popular with the founder for all of his ideas. In particular, he was anti-Republican. Um, Anti-Republicanism. <laughs> yes, yes. Not the party. <laughs> and, and, and Jefferson, yeah. The, there which, was no party. There, which didn't exist <laughs> right. quite yet. Yeah. Um, I mean, so for some of his legal ideas, yes, he was influential, but not for his ideas on revolution or republicanism. Jefferson blamed him for the, quote, degeneracy of the legal sciences. He had little influence on the founders' revolutionary ideas, and again, including republicanism, self-government, and, most importantly, natural law which is what we're talking about and, here. And he was also quoted at the early women's rights advocates a lot hmm. about why they shouldn't have rights. Mm -hmm. so. And the, I mean, the fact that uh, they rejected his ideas about natural law kind of crushes Rapert's claim here. So let's look at number, the, what is this, clip number four already? There we're, we're but there are some of you that have chosen to reject the freedoms, the Judeo-Christian foundation of a country. And I want you to know that none of us are going to settle for that. We're going to stand up for the nation. We're going to stand up for the country. And it's important. Why would you be upset when you hear the history of the country? You're not going to change the history just because you say over and over again that that's not so, that you don't believe it. The lack wow. of self-awareness there wow. just kills me. Huh. So he's trying to say this is a... Christian nation founded by God. Yeah, based on Judeo-Christian Based principles. on his misreading and misunderstanding of the Declaration of Independence. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have a godless constitution, as I said, Amen. entirely secular. That should be sinking in someday to it the should. fundamentalists. He also perpetuates this idea that I used to preach, actually, and you hear a lot in the churches, that in Christ you have true freedom. We have real freedom because we've been set free from the world or the slavery of sin. But the Bible is anti-freedom. Uh, the Bible in the New Testament says, bring into captivity every thought unto the obedience of Christ. And I don't every, know about you, but... Every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow. But captivity really doesn't sound like freedom to me. And, and in Proverbs... Uh, uh, Lean not on your own understanding, but trust in the Lord. So, in other words, turn off your mind. You are not free. You are a follower. Even Paul said he was a slave of Christ. So, he talks about freedom as if that really means something. But actually, in Christianity, they're talking about becoming a slave to a dictator. And this is one of the reasons I think the Declaration is really anti-biblical, too. But there, there are two, two kind of central principles in the Declaration that Rapert is really missing here. And one is that power is situated in the people. And two is that people have the right to rebel against governments. And neither of those 
can be found in the Bible. Yeah. And the exact opposite is preached in the Bible. I mean, Romans 13, we already mentioned, is this, this perfect example. The, the powers on earth are, you, you probably know it better than I, the powers on earth are established yeah. by God. If you rebel against them, you're rebelling against God. Well, then in the Old Testament with Korah, there actually was a rebellion in the Old Testament when Korah asked a simple question of Moses saying, can't God talk to us directly? Why does he have to talk through you and Aaron? <laughs> and it wasn't even a rebellion. It was just a question. <laughs> and so Moses got mad and the earth opened, remember that? It's and swallowed, swallowed up <laughs> Korah and 250 people. And then yeah, all, these, all the innocent people just happened to be standing nearby and get swallowed up too. That's yeah, I mean, story. that's that's kind of a surgical strike, isn't it? <laughs> but anybody who even, it wasn't even rebelling or revolting. He was just asking a simple question. The same question that the Protestants asked of the Pope. Mm -hmm. Why do we need intermediaries? Well, you know, so even in Christianity, you have no freedom to rebel. It's all top down, whereas our Constitution is bottom up. We the people. And, and re rebellion. Supposedly. Yeah. yeah, well, and rebellion and revolution, by definition, are not going to be done or accomplished by orthodox thinkers. It takes heterodox thinkers and there's there's a lot of studies that have shown that you know it is pe people who are not following the mainstream not going to be religious in this sense that are the ones who end up rebelling and revolting and 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 pushing progress yeah which suggests that our founders were not bible thumping christians certainly not like jason raper so, so do we have another clip oh yeah <laughs> peter boldly asserted we ought to obey god rather than men that's acts chapter 529 that i've already quoted Therefore, it is no coincidence that one of the watchwords of the American Revolution was this phrase, no king, but King Jesus. <laughs> wow. I think that Thomas Paine would be surprised to hear that. Yeah, Thomas but... Paine, the deist, and who wrote The Age of Reason and criticized revealed religion. Absolutely. Well, he got the first two words right, no king. <laughs> and we live in a country where there is no king. Yeah, we, we, we proudly fought a rebellious revolutionary war to, to kick out the king, the lord, the monarch, the sovereign, the dictator, so that we the people could think for ourselves. And, and, and now somebody like Rapert doesn't want to think for himself and he wants to be enslaved to a religion. He wants to undo the revolution, basically. Yeah, and, the, and, and he the, thinks he's a patriot. <laughs> and the Constitution prohibits titles of nobility explicitly. And that, that there's another thing wrong with that. that the idea that that wa is a watchword of the revolution, yeah. that's just completely false, a flat out lie. Uh, we know that, uh, we, I kind of did a little research on that today and it traces back to just a fake quote uh, from a battle up in Massachusetts, but we know that this, there's no contemporaneous reporting about you this. You know, uh, something like 79% of people at the time of the revolution did not even go to church. We were, the colonies were largely unchurched mm -hmm. by the time that our nation was being founded. Originally, many of the colonies were based on various religions and there was a lot of divisiveness. But we were largely an unchurched nation. Including the your ancestor. Of the United States. <laughs> including George Saul, the p pilgrim who came, he wasn't a pilgrim, he came over on the Mayflower and was a teacher. And his wife and two children were um, uh, found guilty of not attending Wednesday prayer. <laughs> so the God, the no God gene Runs goes way back. Yeah. But yes, I mean there were certainly always those rebels. But most most Americans were not going to church at the time of the founding of our nation and the adoption of the Constitution. And I think that's important to remember. And I think we've got one more clip, and then we're going to take some questions and see if All Jason right. Rapert's on on with us. Have you had <laughs> enough of this here? And I see we've been on here long enough to be able to see some folks that are from the liberal left the activists, and I hope that you share this with your friends. I want every single American citizen to know the truth about the foundation of the country and upon what our founding fathers believed. And if you don't believe what our founding fathers believed, and you don't believe in the notion of this great American republic that we've been given, then I submit to you that you're un-American. Uh -huh. And of course, so many of the prominent founders were deists, as Thomas uh, Jefferson was. James Madison, who wrote the Constitution, mostly, was the architect of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Was he un American because he wasn't Christian? I mean, I mean the, this is ridiculous. It is, and it's, it's so, the lack of self awareness is just mm -hmm. so striking there because he's betraying 
the central principles of the founding and then saying to do so is un-American. I mean, if anybody is un-American here, it is absolutely Senator Jason Rayford. But some of the founders believed in God, maybe to some degree or other, and some of them went to church. Yes, but the principles were, yeah. I think, deists. I mean, you look at even Benjamin Franklin, who did want to pray at the Constitutional Convention, but no one else wanted to, was a deist. Um, James Madison, and Jefferson, John Adams... And even if all of them were Bible-believing Christians, it doesn't prove that no. they built this nation on Judeo-Christian principles. And it doesn't show that we today have to become carbon copies of their no, views. Of I think we could safely say that none of them thought women should vote. Maybe Thomas Paine. I don't know about Thomas Paine. But none of the founders thought women should have the vote. So are we supposed to all go back and adopt those ideas? According to Scalia. <laughs> maybe according to <laughs> Maybe Rayford, Kavanaugh. Too. Um I also want to just say, George Washington, um, of course, was very unorthodox. He didn't take communion. So when we're looking at so many of the icons, the founding father icons, we are looking at deists or heterodox, unorthodox deists and so on. Absolutely. But you're right. If every single one of them had been a devout Christian, they still deliberately founded a nation in which there's no God in our government. It's a godless constitution. They, didn't, it, they knew that it didn't matter what religion individuals had, that our government should not have a religion. Well, and I just heard that it sounds like Senator Jason Rayford is watching, so I should probably say again so that he can hear that, that I think it is your claims that we are a Christian nation, that we are based on Judeo-Christian principles that are un-American. Yeah. And Andrew, you were originally going to call your book on American. I always liked that title. Mm -hmm. Now it's called The Founding Myth, which is also an excellent title. Mm -hmm. But because that's uh, a word, a pejorative that is thrown at free thinkers, non-believers all the time, telling us to leave our country and so on. Mm -hmm. But it's the people who want to overthrow our secular principles who are un-American. Yeah, they're the ones who are betraying our founding principles. We should be asking, are you now or have you ever <laughs> been a Christian nationalist? Yeah. That's yes. un-American. <laughs> Well, yeah. I, should we take some questions yes. now? All right, let's let's see. What we got. I wonder. I wonder if uh, Senator Raper would would like to ask us a question here. Um, so let's see. Our first question comes from Rosa, uh, and she says, "Are there any free thinking coalitions of lawmakers that provide a counterweight to Jason Rapert's National Association of Christian Lawmakers? <laughs> and if not, yes. how can we encourage them to uphold the separation of state?" Well, as you know, there is the Congressional Free Thought Caucus, newly started a year ago with ten. Uh, members in the U.S. House, uh, founded by Jared Huffman, who's received our Emperor Has No Clothes Award, who's an agnostic, but the other nine are just believers in secularism and mm -hmm. representing um, the Constitution, and we hope there'll be many more joining them. And this is to kind of counteract the Congressional Prayer Caucus, which has caused a lot of trouble. They have seeded a number of state prayer caucuses, and they've also been part of Project Blitz. And which is at the state level trying to pass all this Christian nationalism legislation. So we need to see free thought caucuses at the state level. Absolutely. I would love to see that. And it turns out that Jason Raper is, is watching. So uh, he says, I've never heard more lies and twisting of the truth. I think he's referring to his own video, the clips oh, that we were playing. I mean, he must have been, right? Um, in such a brief period of time. So yeah, that sounds like he's talking about the clips for his video. I agree on that. Uh, he said, thank you for spreading my message. Uh, the great majority of people of the nation are with me on this. Um, I don't know that that's true. Um, there are, Christian nationalism was- It's a minority. It's a minority, and it's viewed now by 47% um, of the country, according to Morning Consult, view Christian nationalism as a threat. A threat, To yes. America, and I, I think it is the greatest, it is an existential threat to America. I mean, they are literally trying to redefine what it is to be an American, so that to be an American is to be a Christian, and to be a Christian is to be an American, and then redefining <clears throat> our law And then what does that say about the rights of non-religious citizens, and Jewish and um, American, uh, uh, the agnostics, the atheists, uh, Wiccans, pagans? And my are ancestors, we not Americans? And My yeah. ancestors, the Native Americans who were on this continent, 15,000 years before God gave the copyright to the Ten Commandments to this tribe of Israelites who knew how to have family and culture and love and morality. Uh, are, are we not true Americans because we don't s subscribe to this minority viewpoint that some Middle Eastern implant to this, to this continent is somehow the ruling religion of the land? Well, and people uh, should understand that that is the goal of Christian nationalism. It is to make Christians 
a favored protected class and everybody else a subclass. And make me an outsider. Absolutely. And that, and that, that was one of goal. the goals of, I'm sorry, but that was one of the goals of Adolf Hitler and Nazism. Yeah. To one, you were Lutheran or you were pagan or, or, you were, outside, or we yeah. were going to kill you. So that's a very dangerous road to go down. When you start to say some citizens are preferred and others are, are uh, undesirable, you get persecution, you, if not actual violence. So um, um, not, not a good way to go. So we have another question from Caleb, uh, which is, what are the ways that we secular Americans can push back against the influence of Christian nationalism and uh, Christian nationalist lawmakers like Rayburn. Join the Freedom from Religion Foundation. No, I Become absolutely a member. think that's true, yeah. though. I mean, that's one of, the, one of the, I mean, we're sitting here, we are on the front lines of the fight against Christian nationalism. It's what the legal team does day after day. And we need not just membership dues, but we need people to join their voices with our voice. And it's really, to be a larger group, the more members you mm -hmm. have, the more power you have, the more you are listened to by legislators and members of Congress. So it really, every single member we have, we value, and we need, we should be 250,000, not 31,000. Although we are, are the third largest secular organization in the world, so mm -hmm. we're proud of that, but... but um, we do need to be much stronger to counter this din of the Christian nationalists who have the ear of our president and the U.S. Senate at the moment. And also uh, join our action alert list. You can write letters to your members of Congress. You can write letters to public officials who are violating the Constitution by inserting and imposing their private religious views on the rest of the nation. Absolutely. So we have, a, we have, we have another question uh, from Mindy. If the Founding Fathers uh, aggressively fought for liberty in the name of God, as Rapert is suggesting, suggesting, why did the framers take exhaustive steps to ensure that our Constitution was godless and that our government was free from religion? Exactly. And uh, I should say, if somebody um, is interested in these topics, at the 42nd Annual Convention of the Freedom from Religion Foundation, which is going to be October 18th and 19th here in Madison, Wisconsin, we have the authors of The Godless Constitution. The book, The, the Godless book, Constitution. It's a classic. Um, uh, Larry Moore and um, Leonard, Kramnick. Leonard Kramnick. And they have a new book that's called, now am I going to get this right? Godless America. It, it's, uh, I'm not sure if I'm getting that title right. But they're going to be talking about their new book in which they are talking about the history of secularism in the United mm -hmm. States and also the free thought movement. And it's a very good book. And I think we're in there, aren't we? The Freedom yes, we are in Foundation there. is in there. Yes, and we will have you speaking about your book. <laughs> and um, we have uh, uh, Frederick Clarkson, mm -hmm. who is the guy, uh, the policy researcher who exposed uh, Project Blitz. He broke the story on that. So, and there'll be uh, other uh, activists and, and legal people there. So we would encourage you to sign up for that conference and um, get together with more like-minded people and learn more about the real secular roots of the United States. But to continue with the question that the questioner asked about why did they do that, I think it's pretty clear that the founders of our country, which was 150 years after the colonists came, the founders of our country had seen and realized the divisiveness and the fights and the ugliness. Mm -hmm. When you set up a Christian theocracy, they were expelling people who didn't have the same theology, they were splitting into sects, and our founders wisely wanted no part of religious divisiveness, and so they wrote a deliberately godless constitution. And uh, James Madison talked about the torrents of blood that were yeah. spilt. Great line. Um, you know, yeah. in, in the old world and in the new over religious well, divisiveness. And, and, and that is one of the critical things that we need, that everybody needs to do, is to push back against this narrative, against the lies and the myths of Christian nationalism. Never let a Christian myth, a Christian nationalist myth go uncorrected. That Absolutely. is one of my mottos. Very oh. dangerous. All right, so uh, Joseph Couch, who is a great activist from the center of the country, uh, says your action alerts help people write their officials to decry Christian nationalism. Do you think, uh, do you write thank you letters for representatives supporting the separation of state and church? We do do that. Sometimes, and, yeah. And, when and they we do. encourage uh, our members to do so, too, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and encourage them to stand strong as well. And we should say, too, I, one of my favorite things that I've had happen, I've had this happen quite a few times working at FFRF, is we will often get uh, complaints from local offici officials who need cover, uh, who need to blame uh, standing an outside up group. to yeah, <laughs> people like Jason Rapert on an outside group. Uh, so we'll have state senators and mayors write to us and say, hey, this is going on 
in our area. Can you write a letter from the Freedom From Religion Foundation so that we can stop it and I can blame you? Well, hmm. it's whistle whistleblown. Yeah, yeah. And we are very happy to do that. Absolutely. And we have had our members recently thank um, various officials. We've had some some big um, wins where we got a Ten Commandments plaque taken out of a school, for example. Yeah. So we have had our members write write those individuals because we know that the the pushback will come, the blowback will come from the religious right. Mm -hmm. So that, that's very important. This official in your community does something right to thank them. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that looks like all. It looks like there's a few other uh, trolls also on the Facebook page, but I think that pretty much does it for our well, questions. And no other, we can answer those trolls. Nothing. <laughs> no, no I, the, the, I mean, J Jason it. Raper thinks he's flattered, um, which maybe, yeah, I don't know. The, Mm. Doesn't seem to be paying too much attention. Maybe we should send him a copy of my book. Maybe he learns something. Yeah, why don't we do that? We'll we'll send Jason a copy of the book. <laughs> so we didn't watch Maybe he the will whole. Read from that. We didn't watch the whole video. We're I couldn't I couldn't make it through his entire video. To we help went prep through for that. <laughs> but uh, I think we get the point that people like uh, Rayford and Christian nationalists really don't have a clue about what they're talking about when it comes to the founding of our nation. Well, that's what happens when you read from the Bible, yep. right? You, you're going to sound incoherent if you base your views on the ideas of a bunch of ancient Israelite prophets and priests. So unlike the New Testament, uh, we're not going to play the rest of uh, his video because we don't condone eternal punishment. <laughs> uh, but uh, any final thoughts before we close off, Andrew, here on uh, Christian nationalism? Uh, yeah, I've, I mean, I've got a, the, the political theology that is Christian nationalism, the very identity of the Christian nationalist depends on the myths that Ray Burt spouts. So the idea that America was founded as a Christian nation is central to its hold on political power. Without that historical support, their policy justifications crumble. Without their common well of myths, their identity will wither and fade. Ray Burt's entire political and ideological reality is incredibly weak and vulnerable because it is based on historical distortions and lies. So we have a chance, if we can seize it, to defeat Christian nationalism. And of course, it's been around since the founding mm -hmm. of our nation. There have been people been very unhappy mm -hmm. with the secular form of our government since we adopted our godless constitution. But why would somebody want to be um, mean, exclusionary, and unwelcoming to people just because they don't go to the same church? <laughs> I mean, that, that question, that seems a little unchristian to me. Well, it's a very, <laughs> very, it's a very yeah. immature morality when you have this fear of eternal punishment and daddy's going to judge you and you're not, you're not allowed to think for yourself. I kind of think people like Rapert and many of these other Christian nationalists are victims. They're victims of this ideology that's pushing this idea that you're no good, you're a sinner, you're bad, you need a father to tell you what to do. When tens of millions of Americans are growing up, getting beyond the point where we need a daddy, where we can think for ourselves to solve the world's problems. If you want to know more about why the Christian nationalists are so very, very wrong, you can read Andrew's new book. It's called The Founding Myth. It contains many more facts and arguments to rebut those dogmatic ideologues. You can also read for free FFRF's brochure. Is America a Christian nation? You can find this non track that's what we call it. It's not a tract, it's a non track <laughs> track for non-believers. You can find that and other informative references at our website, ffrf.org. Go to the publications link and click on brochures. So Th Thank you for joining us. We also invite you to become a member of the Freedom From Religion Foundation to help us in our very important work to keep state and church separate and to educate the public about the views of non-theists. Go to FFRF.org or phone 800-335-4021 and slowly and carefully leave your name and your mailing address, physical mailing address, if you phone after hours. That's 1-800-335-4021. And we mentioned this earlier, but one way you can help FFRF is by contacting government officials who violate the law. So if you want to receive FFR action, FFRF action alerts right there on your smartphone, text the letters FFRF to 52886. That's FFRF to 52886. Data rates may apply. So that's going to do it for our experimental evening broadcast. We hope you'll join us again next Wednesday 
back at our regular noon Central Time slot for another episode of FFRF's Ask an Atheist. Freedom.